my first film was Demons in My Head, which was, I guess it was 1996. Uh, I believe it was the world's first digital live action feature film. It was shot digitally. It was edited digitally on a computer, color graded on a computer, all online. And that was 1996. So from there, I, I done 15 feature films, 25 TV shows, 500 music videos. All I really care about now is my own stories. I, I'm not really interested in doing stuff for other people because uh, you're not going to be remembered for taking a job and being hired to do something for somebody else. You know, I'm really interested in my own original creativity and my own original art. You know, you do a sequel to Star Wars or something, you might be remembered for that. But if you create Star Wars, I think that's really the place to be, the position to be in. I, I like originality. Sight, let's be careful. For God's sake, fly smoothly. Rogue Warrior was, I believe, written in 2011. It was meant to be a, a follow-up to, at the time, my hit film, Humanity's End. I say at the time, it was a very minor hit, but it was beloved by a lot of people. So I felt like a, a sequel would, would be... Uh, useful at that time and fun ultimately you know the writing took it in a different direction I, I you know I'm not that into sequels per se so it was a good starting point at least humanity's end rogue warrior is in the same universe as the film starship rising starship apocalypse which is a two-part film I, I really felt that was more interesting to play in the same universe than to do sequels and prequels and all that stuff it's just they kind of very slightly intersect and you know there's even a, a slight call out to starship in rogue warrior a very tiny mention of it which i kind of like the whole galaxy's gone to the dogs and ai's been running thing it's been restricting space travel and, and managing the disease centers some say he even created the disease to help whittle the population down to a manageable size. Others are saying that the Overlord is his last... So it's possible that we may cause some resistance then. Good. Let's just get in and get out fast, okay, you guys? Yes, you know. No. You can't say anything. Ralston's finally got her to where she's balanced. Yeah, well, Ralston's an ass. Yeah, he's not the only one. Huh? None. Then... I, I had the script sitting there, and then one day I met Tracy Birdsall, the, uh, the Swiss Army knife actress, <laughs> who's very good at comedy, but also really good at um, action and science fiction and drama and everything. And I figured she would be the it girl for Rogue Warrior because she's that talented and you know, obviously good looking, but who isn't these days, you know, with a bit of makeup and filters? But she. Uh, she had something way more interesting than just being a pretty face. And she was massively into science fiction. And she was, to be honest, really into robots. Like, it was going to be her career choice at one point. So, you know, she was the right fit for Rogue Warrior. A lot of people have uh, made comments um, that I ripped off the Mandalorian TV series, but... Rogue Warrior came out, I guess we shot 2015, it came out 2016 or 2017. Of course, this was a long time before The Mandalorian was even uh, shown on the screens, but obviously that's not really a, uh, an uncommon spaceship design. And, uh, you know, you can see an X-Wing might look a little similar. You could say the vessels in um, Terminator are a little similar. You know, they, they've all got their basis of looking like spaceships with thrusters on the side so it was funny to see it the first time it's like wow that's our ship but after that whatever i, I would consider it a pure coincidence i don't think the people uh, who are making the mandalorian would go and look at my my film which was obviously available at walmart at the time but i don't think those people would have considered my film worthy to rip off uh, it was also cool to see that the the prison ship and even some of the dialogue was <laughs> was very similar you know the white hexagon walls and everything but again these are standard science fiction tropes you know you can only do so many shapes in a corridor and that's just how it is 
There was one screensaver they did for uh, on Disney Plus, and it had Gina Carano and the the you know the floating um, baby Yoda creature, whatever he was, in a capsule, and you know the two people. It was like the exact same uh, layout as we had, but again, it's a bit of a standard science fiction trope, you know. So while I do see the similarities, and they're quite shocking. If we were the only two science fiction films on the planet, yeah, sure, maybe they could have ripped me off, but this is a standard pose, I would say. You know, it's very Star Wars-y, or it's very science fiction-y, it's very, you know, it's a very much a cowboy and western type look. So, what can you say about that? I did notice, though, that um, Disney did rip off a French artist, I believe, or somebody who made some album cover art for uh, some jazz album or something, and the solo movie artwork was pretty much identical. I thought that was a bit rude and a bit feeble-minded for the fact that they would do that. I know that if I'd ripped Disney off, they would probably sue me. But, you know, Disney being a faceless corporate entity, it's in their nature to plunder and do things like that. I always feel that while we're all afraid of AI, the reality is it's the corporate empires run by humans that should be feared. These corporations are pretty much run by humans that are so far out of touch with reality they can't see how monstrous their decisions have become. So, you know, that's the real evil and fear or, you know, potential evil, shall we say. It's, it's a whole new world and that, that's what you've got to put your attention to if you're actually afraid of anything. I'm all out of party favors. I'm actually very fond of the film Attack of the Clones because uh, it was around that year that... Uh, but they were George Lucas and Rick McCallum were planning that film and they came to Australia in the year 2000 and I just got to meet with them briefly. I uh, got to watch Rick McCallum <laughs> smoke a lot of cigarettes and, and talk fast, but uh, you know, really liked the guy a lot. And we spoke about the fact that I'd done the world's first digital feature film, which nobody else seemed to be impressed with and still isn't. I don't think I'm impressed with that, to be honest. Uh, but it's it was a fact it still is a fact uh it's the first let's say for the demons in my head is the the first anamorphic widescreen digital feature film live action to be cut completely on a computer uh, and output and screened digitally in 1996 so you know that's something maybe i don't know george and rick especially rick asked a lot of questions about how i got the digital print to not look like digital what's there to talk about he's just a boy a boy have you seen the way he looks at you so let's stop it it's obvious he has feelings for you uh, you've watched him he does have feelings for you it's friendship i i have tried to be as original as i can with my uh, my more recent films and my new series the time war especially I tried to tear out anything that was resembling anything else as much as possible. I, I made a conscious choice to avoid anything creative made after 1945. And that did put me in the realm of Jules Verne and H.G. Wells and the Bible and things, but nothing was ever consciously stolen. It's, it's kind of you put your head in that, in that world for a time, that creative world, and, and see what comes out of it. And this is the problem with cinema as an art form and even AI. Everything is intersecting so much that what, what hope do we have left, you know, to be original? All we can do is look at humanity and react to what makes us human, you know, and that's the story of Rogue Warrior. I was, I was trying to define and understand what makes us truly human and, and, and how will we evolve, you know, so it's, um, I was definitely off on a weird tangent. Uh, I know the film did very well. We sold... As far as I know, hundreds of thousands of DVD and Blu-ray copies uh, in Walmart alone. So, you know, it definitely had a, uh, a resonance to people. And I'm kind of glad and excited about the fact that Rogue Warrior is going to live again as a, uh, as a television series. Uh, or we can call it a six-hour movie where we take, you know, some of the footage from the film and we have, we have already shot other elements that will be released in the in the coming years and hopefully uh, 
people will accept it as an original piece of art and not something that's similar to the Mandalorian. You know, I'm going to try to exercise as many of those elements out of it as I can because I, I, I like it to be a completely creative and separated entity. And uh, I just know that what we got coming will will certainly be fun and entertaining and hopefully a little bit original. Back! Are you the rescue team? Plasma blaster AE activated. I'm not diseased. The hell you're not. The plague wiped out everyone. And how are you still alive? I'm a pleasure bot. Oh, nice. 